Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am in Hengrove, of all places. Super exciting, I know. And I'm just about to go for a run with my friend Amy, who is back there. We are doing 16 kilometers in South Bristol today. I haven't run out here for ages. I can actually get here on foot but didn't fancy a few more kilometers of road running so Amy very kindly picked me up and drove me to somewhere so that we can just do the trailie bits which are the fun bits. Say hi to everyone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being really unorganized for a run. That's okay. <laughs> How are you feeling for today's run? Uh, a bit nervous because my fitness isn't where it should be and I'm pretty sure we... <laughs> I don't want to slow you down. I know you won't be but, slowing um, me down. excited to run somewhere new. I have not run here before. Hey, very exciting. And um, so this is part of the Bristol Three Peaks route, which is uh, a race that I don't know if it happens anymore, actually. I think it might have been cancelled last year. I was supposed to do it last year, but there was a storm the day before, which meant that the entire route was blocked with trees, fallen trees and all that, just debris. So it's cancelled and I think the race no longer happens, which is really sad because we need more really cool races here. But it is a really beautiful route and I'm very excited to give it a go. Usually it's 27k, the full route, I think. But we're doing 16 kilometers today, which will be the longest I've done on my poor little ankle. But I'll tell you about that on the way around. run um so i run around the chew valley a lot so chew valley lake nice um flatter than this why didn't you take me there <laughs> <laughs> not if you come up from the lake <laughs> and amend true. it which is where we ran last time that's probably like my favorite place to go yeah uh last time we did the maverick uh, mendes route which was like what 21k yeah 24k something like that um such a beautiful route we stole it from the race <laughs> and it was so good because Man, we didn't have to really think about it as we're going around. I don't know about you guys, but I hate having to map constantly. I just sort of want to get going and, and run. So yeah, but it's good, good practice to be navigating from the watch because in the Lakes Traverse, there's a long way between checkpoints and not that many people doing the race over 100K. So I reckon I'll be doing a lot of running by myself having to self now so yeah <laughs> they do have markers but it's not something you want to um just go into with no clue of where you're going i think because i don't want to get lost in the lake district and if i know anything about the lakes it's that the, the clouds can come in really quickly and you have no idea where you are oh look at that so pretty <sighs> And I live over there. <laughs> <laughs> we started on the hill, which is what we did last time. It is. <laughs> you asked me questions, I'm so out of breath. Uh, Don't no, worry, nice. I'm panting the whole way up as well. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, no, take thanks. it nice and easy. Oh, so beautiful. So we're on the Bristol Three Peaks path, <laughs> gate number 500. <laughs> Just saying they put down a new gravel path here, which makes it a lot easier to run before it was like ankle breaky terrain. Probably not what I need right now. Uh, so yeah, this is great. Um, it's the great thing about the set routes around here. They are pretty well maintained by um, different walking, hiking groups. Uh, yeah, so this is a nice one. And last time I did it, you literally couldn't get down here because there's so many trees on the path. But it's obviously been cleaned up since this time last year. 
She was very nice. <laughs> Doing some ah, technical trails. <laughs> My first in a while on a slightly dodgy ankle. Woo! Oh my god. Well, sorry guys, can't look at the camera because I will stack it. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so much fun! Woo! -hoo. Oh my god. I feel so heavy on my feet. I feel like an elephant. Heffalump trying to get down these hills. Oh, I'm hoping that by race day I will be fresh and recovered and not not running like a heffalump anymore. Look at this though, it's so beautiful. Where we are going under the what's it called viaduct? Oh, yeah, Pensford viaduct. Pensford. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what viaduct. they're called. Very good. Well done. <laughs> well done, us. <laughs> it's so pretty. busy chatting to uh, <laughs> chat to the camera at all. So we were just discussing um, my insane year of races this year uh, because I was just saying that like provided the 100k doesn't destroy me I should be fine for my next one and provided the next one doesn't destroy me it should help me for my one after that but there is a good chance that each of them will completely knacker my body out and uh, should we go I think, think around, around yeah. yeah. Um, so after my 100k, I have three weeks, and then I've got a multi sport race in Croatia that I'm so excited for. And I was just saying, just saying to Amy that, like, with multi sport races, there's no pressure to go super fast. <laughs> and Amy made the mistake of asking me how much training I'm doing for my 27 kilometers of kayaking in May. And <laughs> The answer is none, <laughs> absolutely none. I think I'm gonna try and do a bit more upper body stuff in the gym uh, for all the good that will do me. Um, but the things I'm scared about are the 100K, understandably, never done 100K before. And then that 10 days after Croatia, I've got UTS 50, which is 56, 55K in Snowdonia. I think it goes twice up Snowdon and it's just going to be brutal. So Croatia is like a, a holiday in the middle and the 27 kilometers of kayaking is sort of incidental and I think if I don't think about it, maybe it'll be fine. Look at the lambs! Hello! They are so cute! So adorable. Don't know how people can eat them. They are just too cute, honestly. <laughs> They're like little puppies. So this is my favorite little cycling cafe, which I thought I'm just, I'm just gonna go up to it because it's so cute. Look. <laughs> oh, look, it's so cute. <laughs> oh, oh God. I'm attacked by a sausage. <laughs> Hi Poppy, sorry to disturb you, that's okay. So Amy never knew about this little cafe despite living very close. <laughs> yeah, so you do cycling in the summer, you said. 
Yeah, if I... the weather's nice and it's a flat. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like me. Um, I will cycle, I'm just not very confident, but I do enjoy it. Mainly because, as we were saying, like, you can stop now and copy a cake and keep going. Yes. Whereas on a run. <laughs> no, you can. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. I went for a run in, uh, I went for a run in Chepstow with some friends and halfway round on the way up to Monmouth where it was in Tinton we stopped for coffee and cake and it was so good and we're going nice and slowly so it didn't really matter but we'll have to try that sometime <laughs> on the longer run maybe than 10 miles we can stop yeah, and have I don't think we deserve it just no. around like three miles downhill <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah maybe maybe you're right sadly <laughs> How beautiful! Look at that! Even in winter this place is so gorgeous. <laughs> Thanks for finding this route. Yeah. He aced it. Yeah. I mean I thought I'd done everywhere around here but I don't know any of this. Put a heat map. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's so good. So you use the Strava heat maps to find this, is yeah, that right? Yeah, Strava mapping for everything. It's um, pretty good. Yeah, just because you can see where other people have gone, so in general you don't turn up to a trail and it's like oh no but i have fast. stories of this have you? <laughs> <laughs> it's happened to me once but like, in general it seems to be okay yeah no to, it, to be fair it is really good usually but sometimes if you if you run a bit that you think other people have run Strava tells you that's absolutely fine but if you run it it thickens the heat map and then if someone else runs it because you've run it it thickens the heat map even more and that happens even if you've gone the wrong way <laughs> So there are so many routes that it's taken me on where it's like, oh, just go across this bit. That's what everyone else has done. And it's literally someone's garden. And you're like- So the owner of the garden constantly is Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah, probably. Or just like some people have done it. So the Strava heat map says, yeah, that's the way to go. And then everyone else does it. And you're like, that's private property. You're not allowed to just run across that. So that's definitely its downfall, but this route is definitely a winner. Eating on the move again, Mella, Bella Forte, apple and cinnamon. If you watched my vlog two weeks ago with Kathy, I tried the other version of these. So good, other flavour that is. So, so yummy, but I forgot to eat all of them. And I've waited far too long to eat them on this run as well, but because I had my breakfast right before heading out, I was still pretty full. I am still pretty full on this run, so. But I'm trying to take it a lot more seriously eating on the move because as I've said so many times before the amount you eat while you're on the move the quicker you recover afterwards it's literally like directly correlated so trying to eat more take my recovery seriously um and on the plus side we go up a hill now which is like definitely the worst time to be trying to talk to the camera Ugh. on the plus side my ankle feels pretty good despite being a little bit sore at the beginning so hopefully it'll be good after this run as well and then I think we might be on the mend. So I was trying to eat when we are going up the big hill because you have to walk anyway. Well, I have to walk anyway. Um, and it means you're not wasting as much time than if you're trying to run and trying to faff with opening packaging. And especially if you're holding poles as well, it all gets a bit much. So I'll just do it while I'm like hiking up a bit of a hill. Uh, these, like I mentioned lots of them, have a bit of an annoying packaging, but they are very good. <laughs>
big last hill. Yeah. We're on the final, a lot of hills. the final schlep. Yeah, <laughs> we've just been going uphill for a while now, and that's the uh, payback for all our many kilometers of nice long downhills at the uh, start. We now got to get back up to the highest point, which is Mays Knoll, and then it's a nice long downhill from there. But yeah, it's actually a surprisingly hilly route. On the roof of Bristol now, we have a really nice long roady bit here. I never thought I would say really nice road, but I've definitely got out of practice from kind of hilly trails because I find that when my mileage is pretty high, and pretty high for me is like anywhere from 30, 35 miles plus, um, I definitely preferentially go for flatter or at least easier terrain underfoot. So I haven't really been doing that many gnarly trails recently, uh, which also means that next week when I'm running a Beast of the Blacks race in the Brecon Beacons, my poor little legs are going to really be taken by surprise and it'll be interesting to see how fit I am compared to last year when I ran it, because last year I was pretty fit I think, because I'd done Green Man Ultra this weekend last year and then two weeks later I did Beast of the Blacks which is 30k 20 miles of brutal hills but it is so much fun so yeah that's my uh, thing next weekend and we will see how that goes and that will hopefully prep me quite nicely for uh, my race whatever like three weeks later in the lakes discussing because she was injured last year with a stress reaction stress yeah. injury from basically just really heavy training and she just said that she got really into the gym which is very pertinent to last week's vlog what were you just saying uh, <laughs> so previous to that yeah i just hadn't i'd never lifted a weight so i had a few resistance bands and things and i'd very gingerly do a few exercises but never stepped to the gym never done any weights and i think it's just a massive wake-up call that you can't go and run 50 miles and not do strength training and that as runners we should be lifting heavy weights. Thank so. you and you're a doctor this is going from a doctor so guys yeah. I'm not just chatting shit she really knows what she's on about. And uh, from someone that thought they'd hate it I really love it I got quite into it so Yay. you cannot tell but uh, I have You look strong. I have. <laughs> well well done that's what we like to hear. 72 hours of recovery honestly maintaining off of distance 17.26. Ooh. Time 150. Very nice. Actually, yeah, that's pretty good. Hi! <laughs> Hi, baby! Hey, yo! Are you trying to eat my food? Food? <laughs> oh, dear. Just came back to the cutest delivery. Science of gardening from my mum. So sweet. I will be reading that this afternoon, I think. Feel pretty good after that run, actually. Very energetic, which is really nice. Although I will be sitting down and chilling for the rest of the day. I'm just gonna go through and tell you what my training has been this week. Cause last week I took the whole week off, as you guys know, because of my ankle problem. I didn't want to do like a full week, even though my ankle is feeling much better this week. I didn't want to do a full week of intense training at the risk of injuring my ankle and having to take another week off next week. So I tried to ease back into it this week and my training has been, oh, it's up on the board now. There you go. Gym, uh, where I did physio stuff, uh, lots and lots of strength training. Killed from that session, actually. Then, an easy 7k run on Tuesday, a gym and an easy 5k run on Wednesday. I was gonna do an easy 10 on Thursday, but instead I did about 6k running and then half an hour on the bike and also like stretching in the gym. Rest day yesterday, 17k today. And then I'll go out again tomorrow and do 7k nice and easy pace maybe with the dog and i've written my plan up here so because it's the last few last few weeks of my training i kind of really want to be able to visualize it and although most of it's taken from the runner app i wanted 
to shift some of the sessions around again, like I said, so that I'm not going straight back into the full swing of things and then risking injuring myself again. So yeah, I've written it all down. It's kind of terrifying. So this is this will be my first intense session in a while, and that's Tuesday after rest day Monday, and then it's nice and easy for the rest of the week until Beast of the Blacks on Saturday, and then five kilometers of straight-legged running on Sunday, because I won't be able to move, I reckon. <laughs> what are you doing? Dangerously close to race day, which is terrifying. I've had to put my dressing gown on because it is so cold in our house. Unbelievable. We've gone fully back to being in winter here in the UK. Any of you guys in the UK will be also experiencing the same thing because we were sort of starting to get towards spring and then winter just returned with a vengeance. And I think next week it's snowing, so we can have we can have spring or we can have what feels like almost summer in March or you can have snow in April or you can have both and it's just very weird like seasons don't really exist here very strange so anyway this week's training has been 40k so far then tomorrow will take me to 45 to 50k for the week plus an hour and a half of gym sessions including some cycling so pretty happy with that uh, this week and hopefully next week I'll be a backup to full strength I gotta say I'm a bit worried about racing 100k not just for the distance but also I just don't feel that trail fit like I don't feel confident and smooth and flowy on the trails like I used to I don't know if that's just because I'm pushing harder now and therefore it's gonna feel harder or if that's because I haven't done as much trail running recently and I'm so used to being on the roads that as soon as I get onto the trails it feels really difficult in comparison I I don't know I haven't really figured out and I don't have all the answers and I imagine once I get around to actually doing my race it will give me the answers for me and maybe I'll be fit and maybe I won't be fit I just don't know so we will see I think next week's race will be a bit of an indicator of how fit I actually am because provided my ankle holds up this week I will actually race it and we'll see how it goes because it's only 30k so I know I can race it I know it's not gonna be the end of me and if I am fit it should feel pretty good and theoretically I should do it faster than last year provided it isn't like heavily snowing which it might be and if I'm not fit it will be very painful and it will be a bit of a kick up the ass and I think I'll probably have to adjust my expectations for the 100k and just take it as an experience of doing the 100k for the first time but not actually racing it necessarily as I kind of had previously wanted to. I really, really, really wanted to go into this one feeling prepared, but you can't predict what's gonna happen in training. Sometimes it doesn't go to plan and you just gotta suck it up and remind yourself that this is only one race of hopefully what will be many, many, many races in the years to come. And it's not the end of the world if it doesn't go exactly to plan. And that goes for you guys as well. If you have any races at the beginning of this year and you've been injured or ill for part of it, as I have been, then it's not the end of the world. Life moves on. You can do the race if you can do the race try and enjoy it regardless if you can't do the race remind yourself that there are other races to come and that your health and recovery is of the utmost importance and the most important thing here so yeah i'm trying to remind myself the same thing we're all in the same boat here thanks for watching this vlog i hope you enjoyed it sorry for my rambling i will be back next week with tales from the brecon beacons and the brutal race that will happen there next weekend with limitless trails i thoroughly recommend checking out their races by the way i know i said that it's brutal and it really is but it is also beautiful. They always have amazing courses. They are always lovely, lovely, lovely people there. So yeah, check out their races and I will be taking you along next week. If you did enjoy this video, please do hit the thumbs up button and of course subscribe. It really helps my videos reach more people. So don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed it and I will see you next week. Thanks again, bye.